whose love through humble service bore the weight of human need, who upon the cross forsaken offered mercy's perfect deed. We your servants bring the worship, not a voice alone, but heart consecrating to your purpose every gift that you impart. Still your children wander homeless, still the hungry cry for bread, still the captives long for freedom, still in grief we mourn our So glad you are tuning in to our online service. Make sure you subscribe, um, share this video with a friend or a family member, and I pray that God's word will strengthen you and inspire you. Please join me for prayer. Heavenly Lord, we uh, thank you. We thank you for reminding us of your holy word that with you all things are possible. As we come before you with our difficulties and obstacles, we thank you for reminding us of who you are, your nature, and your character. And Lord, as we come before you, we thank you for the free gift of salvation. And not only do you give us the free gift of salvation, but you reward us for following you. Lord, we thank you, and we ask that you will guide us in our time of worship. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, 
above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth. There's no way to measure what your worth. Crucified, laid behind the stone. You live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me. Please join me for confession and absolution. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Amen. Upon this your confession, I have a virtue in my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The first reading is taken from Ecclesiastes, the fifth chapter, beginning at the 10th verse. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. As goods increase, so do those who consume them. And what benefit are they to the owners except to feast their eyes on them? The sleep of a laborer is sweet whether they eat little or much. But as for the rich, their abundance permits them no sleep. I have seen a grievous evil under the sun, wealth hoarded to the harm of its owners, or wealth lost through some misfortune, so that when they have children, there's nothing left for them to inherit. Everyone comes naked from their mother's womb, and as everyone comes, so they depart. They take nothing from their toil that they can carry into their hands. This too is a grievous evil. As everyone comes, so they depart. And what they do gain, since they toil for the wind, all their days they eat in darkness with great frustration, affliction, and anger. This is what I have observed to be good, that it is appropriate for a person to eat, to drink, and to find satisfaction in their toilsome labor under the sun during the few days of life that God has given them. For this is their lot. Moreover, when God gives someone wealth and possessions and the ability to enjoy them, to accept their lot and to be happy in their toil, this is a gift of God. They seldom reflect on the days of their life because God keeps them occupied with gladness of heart. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. The second reading is taken from Hebrews, the fourth chapter, beginning at the first verse. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the good news proclaimed to us, just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them, because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. Now we who have believed enter that rest, just as God has said. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. 
and yet his works have been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. On the seventh day, God rested from all his works. And again, in the passage above, he says, they shall never enter my rest. Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest, and since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in because of their disobedience, God again set a certain day calling it today. This he did when a long time later he spoke through David, as in the passage already quoted, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about today. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing the soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all of creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. The Holy Gospel is recorded in St. Mark, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse. Jesus looked around and he said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and they said to each other, who then can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Then Peter spoke up, we have left everything to follow you. Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Welcome to you, for, to all of you who are tuning in. I pray that God's word will strengthen you. Make sure you subscribe, share this video with a friend or family member. And I pray that God's word will strengthen you, will bless you, and give you strength. Now, one time a man was walking in the desert. It was hot. He was lost. He was losing all hope. When suddenly he noticed there was a sand dune and what looks like a camel rental shop. And so the more he walked, the closer he got, it did not disappear. So this was not a mirage. Finally, when he, got, when he got there, he gets to the tent, and the owner of the tent walks out to him and greeted him. The man said, wow, I thought I was done. May I rent a camel so I can get out of here? Well, the owner, of the, uh, the owner replied, of course, but I only have one camel left. But this one's a little bit different, different than the rest. The man said, it doesn't matter. As long as they can get me out of here, it's good enough. The, so the owner said, well, well then, listen carefully. The camel is really quick. And the controls are very unconventional. So basically to speed up, you say, praise the Lord. And then to stop, you say, amen. The man responded, that's not complicated. I mean, you know, praise the Lord to move and then uh, amen to stop. I'll take it. So the man rents the, the camel and he sits on it and begins to shout, praise the Lord. And the camel starts to walk. And then he shouts, praise the Lord again. The camel starts to trot. 
And then he's thinking, how fast can this thing go? How fast can I get out of here? So he shouted, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And the camel took off. And it was running like mad. Well, a few minutes later, a man notices right in front of him, they were heading for a ravine. And so suddenly he started shouting in panic. He forgot the words. He, st- he said, stop, halt. Nothing happened. No reaction. As he was getting closer, he was in a bind. And so he was, he was panicking. And finally, he decided to pray out loud. Dear God, if, I'm, if you ever get me out of here, out of this desert, I promise to attend church for the rest of my life. Please help. Amen. Well, the camel stopped. Screeching stop. And then the camel was one foot away from falling into the ravine. The man said, I can't believe it. I am alive. Praise the Lord. Oops. In our text uh, this um, last week, um, a, rich young, a rich young synagogue ruler came to Jesus, knelt before him, was very sincere in asking him, what must I do? What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus referred him to the commandments. But he says, all these I have kept since since my youth. And Jesus looked at him lovingly and gave him some very important words. He says, you lack one thing. Go, sell all that you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Notice this is the only story or encounter that Jesus has with someone where he encourages or he instructs the person to sell everything they have to follow him. He did this to help this young man realize that money had him. Money was his his idol. Money was more important than God. And so we end with verse 22 from last week's reading. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. Jesus wanted to help this man realize that by his own efforts, his own eff- he can- he's not willing and he cannot sell his possessions and give it to the poor and follow Jesus. Jesus wanted him to realize that his works would, be, would not be enough for him to inherit eternal life. And so today our text is a continuation. Now the young, the young rich ruler is gone already, and Jesus is going to uh, solidify his points with the disciple. And so he, began, he begins on chapter 10 of Mark, verse 23. He comments how difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Verse 24, And the disciples were amazed at this, as his words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. Verse 25, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. That leads to my first point. It is impossible for any person to enter God's kingdom. It is impossible for any person to enter God's kingdom by their own merits. So he says it's difficult for the rich because it's difficult for the rich because the rich have a tendency to rely on their wealth to solve their problems instead of turning to God. And so he says, it is difficult for the rich. But then he continues and he says, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. So he's saying that it's difficult for anyone, not just the rich, but for anyone. And then he goes even further and he uses a, a, an analogy or a, um, a saying a saying back in the ancient times and he says it's imp- he says it's easier for a camel a largest animal that they're familiar with to enter to go through the eye of a needle a man-made needle 
the eye of a man-made needle. It's impossible. So what he's telling them, his disciples, is that it's impossible for any person by their own works and by their merits to enter the kingdom of God. A man dies, he goes to heaven, and of course, these stories, he meets Peter, St. Peter, at the ga pearly gates of heaven. And Peter says, you know what, in order to let you in here, you have to score 100 points. Now, this is how the point system works. You tell me the things that you've done, the good things that you've done on earth, and I'll give you a sign a point to it, points to it. So as soon as you reach 100, you can get in. So the man starts out, I've been married to the same woman for 50 years. I have been faithful to her. I've never cheated. And Peter says, wonderful. That'll give you three points. What? Only three? Okay. I've attended church all my life, tithe, serve, supported the ministry of the church. Terrific, Peter said. That'll earn you one point. What? One point only? How about this? He said, I started a soup kitchen and worked in my city's homeless shelter. I've also helped many homeless veterans. And Peter says, great. Two points. The man cries, what? At this rate, the only way I can get in is only by the grace of God. Peter says, exactly, son. Come in. Friends, there's no way you and I, by our merits, can enter into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is offered to us by a gift, as a gift from God. In Ephesians 2, 8 to 9, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So it is by the goodness of God, the kindness of God, that we are saved. And we receive this gift through faith. It's not from our own doing, our merits. Rather, it is a gift from God. It is not received through good works so that nobody can boast about it. So it is a gift of God received by faith through the generosity of God. And so the fact that no one can enter the kingdom of God through good works, the disciples were worried and concerned. Y you see, wealth in the old days, in ancient times, was considered a blessing from God. I mean, in their minds, they were thinking the wealthy or this young man probably did something right in the eyes of God to be blessed with wealth. And so now Jesus is saying it's difficult for the rich. It's difficult for anyone. It's impossible to enter the kingdom of God. And so they're worried, they're concerned. And then we get to 26, and they were exceedingly astonished and shocked and said to him, then who can be saved? Verse 27, Jesus looked at them and said, with man it is impossible but not with God, for all things are possible with God. So with God, all things are possible. That means our work, our good works can't save us, but only God can save all of us. God can save even the worst of sinners, the thief on the cross. He saved the thief on the cross who would never spread the would never have an opportunity to spread the good news. He would never go to church and worship. He would never share his story. He would never put a dollar in the offering box. He would never go on a missionary trip, and yet Jesus saved him. In addition, Jesus saved a traitor, a tax collector. I mean, in the in the in those days. Israel was under Roman occupation. Someone who collected taxes for the enemy was considered a traitor. Jesus saved Zacchaeus. Friends, Jesus can save anyone. God can save anyone because all things are possible. Now, when we, th when we talk about 
this concept here, there are like three, at least three stories in the Bible that reminds us that, that all things are possible with God. Abraham experienced a life-changing experience. Now one day, three visitors came to visit him. One of them was God in the flesh. And so he comes to Abraham and he says to Abraham, by this time next year, Sarah will give birth to a son. Now his wife Sarah heard this and she was laughing because she's 89 years old. She's past childbearing age. Her biological clock had run out. Back in those days, they didn't have fertility treatments or fertility drugs. They didn't have IVF. In fact, she was laughing. Then God asked Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say, can an old woman like me have a baby? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return about this time next year and Sarah will have a son. You see, God countered Sarah's rhetorical question, can an old woman like me have a baby with one of his own? Is anything too hard for the Lord? In other words, God is saying, nothing is too hard for me. A year later, Isaac was born, and God has kept his word, and, and, she gave, and Sarah gave birth to a son. Another time, this concept was listed in Jeremiah 32, 27. Uh, it says, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too, too hard for me? Of course not. Well, the context of that was God's people had been disobedient to God, worshiping idols, and they were about to be destroyed and taken into captivity into Babylon. Well, God had already told them that they wouldn't be there forever. They'd be there for 70 years, and then God would save them and deliver them. And so at that time, they were, they were in sorrow. But yet God said, there's hope because I'm going to bring you back. And we know in history, after the Babylonians came, the Persians, Cyrus, King Cyrus releases them. And King Cyrus is the type who releases them, who supports them to go back and rebuild their country. And so is there anything too hard for the Lord? The answer is no. Then the famous story we all know. The angel Gabriel visits Mary and tells her, you're going to, be, you're going to have, have a baby. You're going to have the Son of God. He says, don't be afraid, Mary, for you found favor of God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. You shall call him Jesus. And Mary's reaction is, but what? How is that possible since I am a virgin? The angel Gabriel answers, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. So the angel announced two human impossibilities. A virgin would would conceive and through the power of the Holy Spirit and give birth to the Son of God. Elizabeth, an elderly woman who was past childbearing age, her biological clock had run out, was already, in, already pregnant in her sixth month. She would eventually give birth to John the Baptist. Now, how can this happen? With God, nothing will be impossible. Friends, if you are going through a difficult time, understand that nothing is impossible with God. Whether it is a willness, illness, a job interview, a declining friendship, a family relationship, nothing is too hard for the Lord. It may seem difficult for us, but it's not difficult for God. In fact, the Lord created the heavens and the earth, the animals and mankind. He can do anything. He has unlimited power. So trust him. 
In addition, friend, if you have friends who don't know Jesus, this is what this text is about. With God, all things are possible. They may re- reject God. They may reject Jesus. Pray for them. Pray that God will send somebody to s- share the good news with them. Nothing is impossible with God. But Peter was concerned now. After hearing Jesus tell him that, you know, not a, it, it's impossible for human beings to be saved. And then he says, with God, all things are possible. And Peter is still concerned. He, he says, see, verse 28, we left everything and followed you. Jesus said, truly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers, sisters and mothers and children and lands and persecution in the age to come eternal life. Finally, the last point here, we are re- rewarded for humbly following him. We are rewarded for humbly following him. Notice the promise here, 100 fold in this lifetime. So what Jesus is saying is that when you follow him, you will be rewarded 100 fold with what? Houses, that means property. Well, the church has a lot of property, so we have already been blessed enough to take care of. Brothers and sisters, now I have one biological sister, but I have many f- brothers in the faith that, uh, that I can rely on, brothers in the faith that supports me, sisters, and many sisters in the faith as well. Uh, mothers, I have many deep relationships with women that are older than myself, that are that is my mother's age. Children, I have a school full of children. And then also notice it also says, with persecutions, hardships, This life, we will have hardships, but the rewards is that we have a community, brothers and sisters, a family of faith to support us through all difficult times. And then included with that is, and in the age to come, eternal life. So wow, we we, we get, really, we get all of it. So, So God owes us nothing, but he gives us everything. It's impossible for us to save ourselves. So, so God sent his son Jesus to die on a cross for all, all of our sins, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So he gave us a gift of eternal life. In addition, we receive that gift by faith. And when we follow him, we humbly follow him, he rewards us. So we have eternal life, but you know, we also have rewards in this, in this life. He gave us everything. Several years ago, um, at our church in Fremont, uh, we we started a uh, we started a alpha we found an uh, alpha group, and what we did was um, every Wednesday night we would meet together for during t- we had dinner together, then we would listen to a talk, and then we would have uh, a talk about the basics of Christianity, and then we would have discussions around the table. Well, there was this one preschool um, le- uh, mother, Susan, who at the same time had a son who, who was in the same class as my son. And so she shared with us that she's really interested. She's a Christian, but her husband was not. And so she really wanted him to come. And so we prayed for him. She left him a flyer. Uh, then through inviting, he finally came. And so as he sat through the course every Wednesday with us, he came to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Now to make the long story short, he desired to be baptized along with his two two boys. Well, during that time uh, in our alpha group, uh, we had a couple named Ken, Ken and Barb, and Ken and Barb befriended this young couple. Now, pl- please bear in mind, they have nothing in common. Ken and Barb, they were retired, elderly, retired couple. 
Susan and Jihoon, they were in their 20s, maybe late, middle or late 20s. They have small kids. Ken and Barb have adult kids. And so they really didn't have much in common. Ken and Barb was Caucasian. Jihoon and Susan, they were Korean. Well, they became friends, and Ken and Barbara sponsored their children in baptism. Well, to make the fast forward two years ago, I was at Ken and Barb's memorial service. And during that time, I had an opportunity to share a little bit about Ken and Barb because I knew them for a long time and, and served with them. And also, during the service, I noticed uh, two teenager or two young men I in the audience. And afterwards, we went up to, to introduce ourselves to speak to them. Well, what we found out was those were the two boys that Ken and Barbara sponsored in baptism. And I asked, how's mom and dad? And they said, mom and dad, Susan and Jihoon had moved back to Korea, South Korea. And then I asked, what, what are you planning to do here? He says, well, we're finishing school. And the oldest said, I, I just finished college and I plan to go into a Bible college to become a pastor. I was just blown away by God's work. I mean, through the community, through the relationships that happened, Ken and Barb had a spiritual grandchild. <laughs> and my dear friends in Christ, I mean, God is just wonderful, you know? Um, not only does he give us the gift of salvation that our, that our place in heaven is secure, but he rewards us. He rewards us for following him. And so we humbly humbly follow him for what he has done for us. We can't save ourselves, but God can save us. He did it through Jesus Christ. So I pray that God will richly bless you as you follow Jesus in humbleness. Amen. Join me for prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we know that through our own merits or our, our efforts of trying to keep the commandments, we will fail. And so we can't be saved. We can't go to heaven. But yet, you offer it to us as a gift. All we need to do is to receive your Son, Jesus, as our Lord and Savior. And not only will we have eternal life, but that you promised that you will reward us a hundredfold here through friendships, through relationships, through, through, through your body, Lord. We thank you so much. We thank you for all of your blessings and we lift up those who are hurting and suffering, especially those on, in the East Coast, those who've experienced a flood and hurricanes. We also pray for peace in our world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm.